Hi, I'm Dr. Jack, and we're gonna find out what the cause of death on this camel is. All right, so uh, we're at Red Hill, and we weren't exactly expecting it, but we've got a, quite a mob of camels here. So at the moment, I'm uh, joined by Matt, who is an independent photojournalist, and he's got his drone up. Now, we were actually on our way up to Bullock to tackle some camels, but now we've got a drone in the air at Red Hill. Uh, initially, we thought it was three or four camels, and I started out with a and then I saw how many there actually were. So we're taking our time and I've got myself a bit of ammo. I probably should have brought a lot more. Um, but yeah, he's getting ready to give us a bit of chase cam footage and we'll leave this somewhere like on the dash so we can get some of our in-cab commentary. <laughs> Thirty-seven degrees. The forecast today is <laughs> uh, sunny with a chance of meatballs. Wait, don't jump out of the yard, you prick! Have you got eyes on that one? Yeah. Uh, he's just trying to jump, was it? Yeah, he's trying to jump the yards. Oh. Yeah, it's game over for you now. You. Ugh. I might have to get stuck into him. Yep. Go for it. Oh. Oh. Drone down. Drone down. Yep. All right. I've got visual on where it went down. Fucking hell. It's annoying. down pretty nicely so we can walk through and take them out if we want. Say that again? Uh, we've got them slowed down pretty well. Yeah. Should we go for a walk? Uh, they're at driving distance. I'll just whack this one. I might just pick my drone up. Uh, go pick it up one yeah, moment. Let me know when you're ready. He's down. Alright, let's go for a walk up. This thing's clear. We'll go get that drone. Alright, so I'm just going to drive up and um, then I'll take out those last two. We'll see how Matt goes with his drone. All right, I'm going to leave my camera here because Matt's the professional, so we're going to go take these ones out. All right, g'day everyone. Uh, I have just popped these couple of camels. We've got five in a line here. One, two, three, five in a line. And we've got the one in the yards who's still alive. But I've got something exciting that I've never shown before, and we've got a great opportunity now to do it. And it's going to be a little bit along the lines of guess the caliber. Today, we're going to extract a bullet from a camel. We're also going to harvest a little bit of meat because this one's in good condition. So let's get into it and have a look and see what it looks like after the caliber you're going to guess has gone through a camel. The tools I've got today is a 60A scalpel, which is going to be good enough to get in and find out what this small red spot has been caused by. We've also got our gerber knife and we've got our adder knife so we can harvest some meat afterwards. So I'm gonna start the incision above this bloodline and we'll see 
what's happening in there. This is straight through the shoulder, so let's have a look. All right, so I've made an incision here, and I might have to just go a little bit further down. Don't come to me for surgery. Okay, so it appears that we've got some sort of strange hole that has appeared in this camel. We've got a little spot over here, so we're going to have a little bit of a closer look and find out what that is. Oh, hang on, that's a lot easier. We don't even need the knife there. Let's poke this out. Well... Hello to you. You've got a bit of weight to you, and um, I'd like to see what caliber all you guys reckon this is. But I'm going to suggest that this mushroom shaped device has been the cause of this camel's demise. It's not that deep, eh? Hey? Uh, no, that's gone through it. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's. It's How transferred. Did it just happened to be right there, or just, that's just where it ended, finished up. It's, it's where it ended up, having gone through the camel, wow. through the heart, and you can see that it's hardly walked any distance from where we engaged them. And yeah, that's his. Um, that's the end of him. Do they normally go through the camel, or do they um, normally end up inside? Normally, you want the all the energy to get transferred to the inside of the camel. Yeah. So that means that all of the energy from this has caused shock, mm. and it creates a shockwave out and causes trauma to all the muscles and organs. So that is pretty cool. Let's go show that. How often does that happen? Uh, not often, usually they stop in there. All right, let's um, cut him, her. Let's cut her open and get a bit of meat off it so we can um, do a cook up tonight. I promised Danny some camel, so I can't, I can't let him down. So the, the knife is actually from some guys up in Darwin that make them. Well, actually, I should be doing it with the adder knife instead of blunting my other knife. We've got all of our large amount of fat, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the skin off and then we'll take the fat off. Because the skin's got a quite amount of dust in it and we want to protect our meat from having dirt in it. Also means we can have a good look at what a hump looks like. So yeah, you can see that this is quite a lot of fat up here. And now I'm going to try and just take and fat itself off. Now the fat is a delicacy in the Middle East. So that is just pure fat. pure fat. But then across the rest of the body there's not a lot. And so it's actually a different fat in the hump to the rest of the body. Guess like humans, we have brown fat, white fat. Is the hump all fat? Yeah. yeah. There's a very small amount of meat. Remember as kids were taught that the, um, all the water's in the hump? Well, technically it is. Yeah. Um, and as you see this fat as we're cutting it off, much like whale blubber from those old documentaries we used to see, um, it's very wet. Uh, 
And that's it. <laughs> so, that's our bit of meat that's under the hump. But how, how insane is that? All of that just for that little piece of meat. Yeah. It's a lot of energy and a lot of food that I've consumed and then that much meat. Mm. You can dress out a lot more. The legs, of course, have more meat, less fat. Typically, I'd slice their throat um, to make the meat nicer, but mm. we're in a bit of a pickle today. Drop that there. I ordered that biltong spice last night. <laughs> okay, so that's our little um, a little dig into the camel here today and that's thank you very much to Outer Knives Darwin and Fishing and Outdoor World Darwin for sending me down that opener. I've used the Gerba knife with the switchable blades but I also used the Havlon multi-tool. So usually we wouldn't use a multi-tool for that sort of knife work but it's got a disposable blade and I'm a pretty big fan of that sort of technique. However, the disposable blade doesn't really work as a lever which we use our knives for way too much. So we're going to carry on on our way, but let me know what rifle and what calibre you think that was that dropped this camel. So we'll see you in a bit as we carry on our day.